In this video, we are going to discuss the effect of changing preload on the arterial elastance. If you missed the arterial elastance video, please review it before proceeding with this session. First, let's start with a quick refresher on the left ventricular pressure volume loop. This loop represents the changes in pressure and volume in the left ventricle during one cardiac cycle, with volume on the x-axis and pressure on the y-axis. The loop progresses through four main phases, isovolumetric contraction, ejection phase, isovolumetric relaxation, and filling phase. Now, let's just draw the line of the arterial elastance, which goes from the end systolic pressure point to the end diastolic volume at zero pressure. Of course, this is because elastance is pressure divided by volume. The pressure here is the end systolic pressure, and the volume is the stroke volume, which is the difference between the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume. Now, as we learned in a previous video, here is the equation for arterial elastance. As you see, arterial elastance equals the the end systolic pressure, ESP, divided by stroke volume, SV. It is also heart rate times resistance. Essentially, the three parts of the equation, arterial elastance on the left side, the end systolic pressure divided by the stroke volume in the middle, and the heart rate multiplied by the resistance on the right side, should all equate each other's. That means if the heart rate goes up, the arterial elastance goes up, and the only way the three parts equate is by decreasing stroke volume or increasing end systolic pressure. That is why we say elastance is dependent on heart rate. With this in mind, let's see what happens if we add more volume to the ventricle at end of diastole, which will increase the preload. Increased preload means an increased EDV, which stretches the ventricle more and can enhance the force of contraction according to the Frank-Starling mechanism, causing higher stroke volume. So let's assume that the increased preload increased the end diastolic volume, and of course the pressure to this point here on the end diastolic pressure volume relationship, when preload increases, we see a rightward shift in the EDV point on the pressure volume loop. This leads to a larger stroke volume, which in turn causes an increase in the ventricular pressure during systole and at end of systole. The pressure volume loop becomes wider, indicating an increased stroke volume and the stroke work of the heart. Now, if we draw the elastance line for the new loop, you will see that it goes parallel the line of the initial arterial elastance line. Let's reiterate. With increased preload, there is an increase in the stroke volume, associated with an increase in the end systolic pressure keeping a constant elastance. Going back to this formula, you can see how elastance remained the same as the result of increased stroke volume and increased end systolic pressure at the same time in cases of increased preload. Of course, the heart rate or resistance remained constant on the right side of the equation. To recap, arterial elastance does not change with increased preload. The line is only shifted to the right as a result of increased stroke volume, end diastolic volume, and end systolic pressure. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave your questions and comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.